There's nothing more annoying than trying to access one of your home lab services and forgetting the IP address or the port, or if it's HTTP or HTTPS. Then if you actually get there, having to click through a self-signed certificate warning just to access your service. We can use a local DNS server to point a domain name to an internal IP address, but that won't solve the certificate issue and you'd still need to know the port. So today we're gonna fix all of this using Docker with Nginx Proxy Manager and Pi-hole as our internal DNS server. And when we do, you'll never go back to typing in individual IP addresses again. Now we will be using Docker on a Synology NAS, which speaking honestly is the absolute worst place to run this because of the port conflicts inside of DSM. I have a Docker Compose file that works and works well, but I wanna point that out because if you have a separate home server running Docker, you should configure all of this on that device to avoid having to configure and use a Mac VLAN and bridge network interface. With that said, this all works and works well. So if you follow these instructions step-by-step step to get it working in DSM, you should be able to configure this on your side as well. Now let me explain how all of this works because you might find that you don't actually need to configure Pile. The first step is being able to translate a domain name into an IP address. This is so that we can access the service without having to type in the IP address. We can do this using an internal DNS server. Your router might have an internal DNS server built in, and if it does, you can skip over the Pi-hole piece unless you actually want to utilize the benefits of Pi-hole. After we can resolve our domain name to an internal IP address, you need to figure out a way to add an internal reverse proxy server into the equation so that we can forward that specific domain name to an internal server and port. And we'll be using Nginx Proxy Manager for this. This will allow us to use port 443 for everything while still accessing the internal server on the port it's listening on. This step will get us to the service by using the domain name without the port, but won't have a valid SSL certificate. And that's why we're using Nginx Proxy Manager. Using Cloudflare with a domain we own, which is my preferred approach, or DuckDNS as a free alternative, we're gonna get a wildcard certificate through DNS. This will avoid having to open any ports to get or renew the certificate. Once that's all done, it's a matter of creating new proxy hosts and DNS records, and you'll be able to access all of your services without knowing the IP address or port and have a full SSL certificate as well. So no more self-signed certificate errors. Now I have a written tutorial in the description with the Docker Compose file you can use to configure Nginx Proxy Manager and Pi-hole on a Synology NAS. But I'll also include a default Docker Compose file in case you wanna configure Nginx Proxy Manager on a separate server. Real quick, if you wanna hire me, link is in the description. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is create a project inside of Container Manager. But before we do that, we gotta create a few folders. So inside of the Docker folder, we're gonna create a top level folder called NPM. We then are gonna create two subfolders, one called Data and one called Let's Encrypt. And then we're gonna do the same for Pi-hole. So Pi-hole, one folder, dnsmask.d, and then the second will be Pi-hole. As soon as that's created, we'll be able to reference those inside of our Docker Compose file. So we're gonna select create and we are gonna give it the name npm pihole and we are gonna set the path as npm. This is just gonna be where the Docker Compose file will live. And then I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna paste in this Docker Compose file and we're gonna quickly talk through this because there's a lot here, but it will all make sense in a second here. So the first thing I'll talk through is the actual networks. We have two networks here. The first is the uh, NPM bridge, and this is how we're gonna talk between the Synology NAS and the actual Nginx Proxy Manager container. And then the second is the NPM network. And this is actually gonna be used for Pi-hole and for um, our Nginx Proxy Manager container as well. Inside of here, 192.168.1, that's the subnet that I'm currently using on this test network. If you're using something different, you'll have to modify that. And then OVS ETH-0. So inside of the control panel, if you enable SSH and then you open up a terminal and you SSH your username at the IP address of your NAS, as soon as you sign in, if you run the command ifconfig, you will get brought to all the network interfaces on the NAS. So what we're looking for here is the IP address of our NAS. That's mine right there. OVS underscore ETH0 is the actual parent network interface we're gonna have to use. For you, it might be different, so you're gonna to have to take whatever name is there and actually reference it here. Next, in our actual containers here, so we have two containers, one for Pi-hole and one for Nginx Proxy Manager. 
inside of them, we are referencing the uh, actual networks that we had defined below. However, we are specifying IP addresses for them. And this priority is extremely important for the Nginx Proxy Manager container because it has to know which order to actually use the container. So this will be the main network and this will be the secondary network that I will explain later. So if you have to change the actual IP addresses, you're gonna have to do it in both of those containers. While there's one actual Docker Compose file here, there will be two total containers created from this. And we're doing all this to avoid the port conflicts. So for uh, the PyHole container, port conflicts would be 80 and 53. And then for Nginx Proxy Manager, the port conflicts would be 443 and 80. Because they are two separate IP addresses here, and because we are using a Mac VLAN network interface, we will avoid all port conflicts on the NAS itself. The only other thing you can change here is the web password for the PyHole web interface, but generally everything else can stay as default, though you might have to modify things if you're using PyHole currently. Uh, you'll either have to stop that container and configure a new one, or you can continue using it and set up Nginx Proxy Manager somewhere else, but this is the default setup. So what I'm gonna do is run through and actually create this container now, and it's gonna take a little bit of time because the Nginx Proxy Manager container is about a gig, but we will pick back up here in a second. Okay, so at the end here, what you're gonna see is it's gonna run through and it's gonna create our two network interfaces. It will then create the containers, it will start the containers, and that's the point we're at now. So inside of the project that we created, you'll see we have two containers, one for Nginx Proxy Manager, and one for PyHole. Now again, we defined in the actual configuration file the IP address we're gonna use. So we're gonna use this IP address for Nginx Proxy Manager and port 81, and you will get brought to the login page. So the username is admin at example.com, the password is change me. As soon as you sign in, you are gonna have to set up your user account. Okay, so I set up my user account. The next thing we will do is sign into PyHole. Now again, the actual IP address here is 192.168.1.198 for me. For you, it might be different. And then the password will be what you defined here. So as soon as you sign in, we will be brought to PyHole. So we now have Nginx Proxy Manager and PyHole configured. What we have to do is start using PyHole as our DNS. Now it's gonna be different based on the router you're using. For me right now, I'm using a Synology router running SRM, which I just created a video on if you're interested in that. Uh, running SRM, and what I'm gonna do is actually modify the primary network that this is on to use .198 as my primary DNS server. Okay, so I just renewed my DNS, and you'll see that we are now set as .198, so that's good. And inside of PyHole, you'll see that we started to get traffic. So for my entire local network now, we are using PyHole as the DNS server. Okay, so at this point, we have Nginx Proxy Manager and PyHole installed and configured. The next step will be retrieving a wildcard certificate that's renewed through DNS. This will ensure that the certificate can be renewed without requiring any ports to be opened but also will allow us to use one certificate for all of our home lab services. This can be done on Cloudflare with our own domain that we purchased or DuckDNS as a free alternative. I do suggest using Cloudflare, so if you want to purchase your own domain, I'll leave a link in the description. If you do want to use Cloudflare, you have to connect your domain to Cloudflare, and I have the entire process in this video. I'll leave timestamps in the description in case you want to set it up. But again, you can use DuckDNS, and I will show that when we set it up. So I said that we have to use either Cloudflare or DuckDNS, and I will overlay uh, DuckDNS when we get to that portion here. But the first thing that we have to do is set up a API token for Cloudflare, and this is basically for our domain. So inside of the API token section, we're gonna create a new token, and we are gonna create a custom token, and we're gonna set the permissions as zone, DNS, and edit, and then if you want to, you can modify the zone resource if you have multiple websites under your Cloudflare account, you can specify whatever website you wanna use it for, and then everything else can stay as default, and when you select continue and create your token, there will be a token that you have to copy. As soon as you click create, you'll see it. So now what we have to do is actually retrieve a wildcard certificate utilizing that API token that we just did. So in the SSL certificate section, we can select add SSL certificate, and then what we're gonna do is add a wildcard certificate for whatever domain you currently purchased. Next, we are going to use a DNS challenge so that we don't have to actually open up any ports. This is where you can select your provider. So if you wanted to use DuckDNS, 
rather than using star dot whatever your domain is, you would use star dot whatever subdomain you selected inside of DuckDNS. I'll put a pop-up now showing how it would look, but you'd basically just put your DuckDNS token here. For us, we're using Cloudflare, so I'm gonna change that here. And then I'm gonna paste in my API token, agree to the terms and save. So as soon as you save, it's gonna go out and get that certificate. And assuming this all works as expected, we will have our wildcard certificate in a second here. Okay, so we have our Let's Encrypt certificate at this point that was obtained through DNS. So moving forward, it will renew on its own and you will not have to have any uh, ports open or anything like that. You just have to make sure that API token stays valid. So now that we have our wildcard certificate, we have two final steps that have to be followed in order to get our reverse proxy server working. The first will be creating a reverse proxy rule and the second will be a DNS record. The DNS record will point to the reverse proxy server and the reverse proxy server will hold the configuration for our home lab services. So what we're gonna do is first create a reverse proxy record for Nginx Proxy Manager. I think that is what makes the most sense. So as you can see, we're accessing it by the IP address here. So what we're gonna do is go to the dashboard, go to proxy hosts, and we're gonna add our domain name as npm dot our domain. And then this utilizes HTTP. So what we're gonna do is type in the actual IP address and then port 81 because that is what we're using. Next, we're gonna to go to SSL and we are going to select our wildcard certificate and we're gonna force HTTP to support and we are gonna save. And at this point, our proxy host is created. However, it's not gonna work because we don't have a DNS record at this point. So now what we have to do is go into Pi-hole and in the local DNS section, we're gonna create a DNS record for our NPM server. We're gonna select add here, and now we have a DNS record. If we run an NS lookup in Windows, you'll see that we can now resolve that uh, domain name. So at this point, if we refresh this, we will be brought to our login page for Nginx Proxy Manager, and we will have a certificate. So moving forward, we can utilize this. Now remember, for all of our records moving forward, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new DNS record, and then we're gonna have to create a proxy host inside of Nginx Proxy Manager. But the better way to handle this, rather than creating DNS records for everything, is to create a CNAME record. So the next one we're gonna create is DSM. So we're gonna point dsm.rdomain to our NPM record that we created here. And the reason for this is so that if we ever change the location of our Nginx Proxy Manager server, the only thing we have to update is this record. We don't have to go in and actually modify everything. So at this point, dsm.rdomain is pointing to npm.rdomain and npm.rdomain is pointing to the IP address of our Nginx Proxy Manager server. So the next thing we have to do is create a proxy host for DSM. Now this is where it gets a little different because for uh, DSM, we're actually utilizing a bridge network interface. So by default, a Mac VLAN network interface cannot actually communicate with the host. That's why we had to go in and create this bridge network interface. That's how we'll communicate with both of them. So from the host, meaning from DSM, if we want a DSM to communicate with our Nginx Proxy Manager container, we would actually use this IP address, .10. But for Nginx Proxy Manager to communicate with DSM, we have to use the gateway. So that will be 192.168.100.1. So what we're gonna do is create a proxy host and we're gonna point it to the IP address of that gateway and then the port for this is 6251 and I'm using HTTPS. So that all makes sense. If you're using the default ports, you'll have to modify that and you'll have to modify the scheme as well. Next, we are gonna select our wildcard certificate. We are going to save everything. And if this works as expected, we will be brought to DSM with our certificate. Now again, this is only for anything running inside of DSM. So I'll give one more example. If we wanted to come in here and actually modify it so that Synology Drive, we'll say, is accessible on port 8085, for example, what we will do is we will go into Pi-hole, we will create a new CNAME record, and I'm just gonna call it drive.mydomain, and I'm gonna point it back again to the NPM record there. Then we're gonna go into Nginx Proxy Manager. We're gonna create a new host and we're gonna select the HTTPS scheme. We're gonna select that gateway again because it's running directly on the NAS and we're gonna select HTTPS port 8085. So at that point, 
the only thing we have to do is select our SSL certificate again, force SSL, save everything, and then we will get brought to a login page for Drive. So moving forward, no more IP addresses, no more ports. Everything is handled inside of Nginx Proxy Manager and our local DNS records are managed here. The only thing I wanna point out is that in terms of CNAME records or local DNS records, it's gonna be different based on whatever local DNS server you're using. Pi-hole works, it makes sense, uh, but you don't have to run it. I have it set up in my regular environment running all on PFSense, but the point is, this is really only used for DNS resolution. The configuration is done inside of Nginx Proxy Manager. And the final thing I wanna talk through is that based on the proxy host, there might be things you have to change. So for example, if we wanted to configure a reverse proxy for a home assistant, there's a change you have to make inside of the Home Assistant configuration file, but you also have to enable WebSocket support. If you don't enable WebSocket support, it is not gonna work properly. You'll be able to get to the login page, but you're not actually gonna be able to log in. However, at this point, if you go in and you add all your records, remember they will be the regular IP address for basically all of your services outside of DSM. For DSM, it will be using that bridge gateway IP, but for everything else, it'll utilize that wildcard certificate and you'll be able to reference it by a domain name rather than the IP address in the port. Again, at this point, you'll have to add all your services, but the best part about this setup is that you'll have one certificate that can be used for everything, as well as a two-step process moving forward for adding all your services. There was a lot in this tutorial, but I'm hoping that it helped explain how you can set something like this up. But if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.